Hello and welcome to another Tech Fight video from CMG. My name is Farad Zari, and today I'm going to show how to use Pi Control in order to react based on layer productions. Please note this is a follow-up on our previous Tech Byte uh, called Introduction to Pi Control. In that video, I explained the basics of uh, the application and uh, how you can use that in order to create a two-way coupling between the Python script and the CMG simulators. In this case, uh, the demo is uh, going to cover an IMEX data set. Uh, we have a horizontal well in this model that's uh, drilled very close to the uh, water leg. And uh, the water is going to invade the uh, different perforations. Uh, we want to keep monitoring the production from different layers. And if any of layers were to produce more than 50% water, we want to choke back that by a factor of 95%. And eventually, when the oil rate drops below 60%, 60 uh, cubic meter per day, we want to shut in the, uh, the well. So let's go to the Pi control and see how we can implement this. Here is my launcher 2022. And we can uh, we have all the applications that come with this uh, general release. The Pi control, the application that we're going to use here, um, is uh, in the list of the uh, production uh, applications. Uh, here, I just uh, filter for the DAT file and the, for the Python files, just to have a, a neat view of my launcher. So I'm going to uh, use this script. Uh, with the with the data sets. So I have three data sets. The first one is the base data sets that we result uh, so in my uh, slide. And I have two copy of the same file uh, that are going to be uh, coupled with my uh, Python controller and we will simulate uh, two different scenarios. So I'm going to start with the first one. So uh, the file name I'm calling it is that uh, it comes with the tag of that pi. So drag out that into my Pi control application. And in this case, I have an already in a script to use. So I'm going to browse for that script. It's in the same folder. And it keeps scanning the data set for different uh, variables and automatically populates the, the variables list based on the, uh, the previous definitions. Uh, on the top, you can see I'm reading the current simulation times. And, and I'm reading the current STO for this horizontal well. Um, for the variable 14, uh, third variable, which is at line 49, uh, here you have a line number. I'm looking at not only uh, not individual layers, but all the layers, uh, the, the STO, STW, the water production form. Every layer is going to be stored in this variable. So that's going to be an array, uh, the, the new variable. And similarly, there will be another array containing the STO. So those are the definitions on the top. Uh, in terms of uh, processes, so because we want to uh, check based on the water cut, this syntax uh, returns the, uh, the the X, which represents uh, my water cut, water production um, from the layer. And this is the oil production by layer. Uh, this syntax if you, basically creates a pair of these two variables. And we can refer them based on X and Y used in this uh, for uh, loop. And uh, once this is processed, uh, you will get another array, which is um, control, which is uh, stored in this variable name that has a water cut per different um, per completions. So the, on the second line, on the line after, I check for the maximum water cut. Uh, that's going to be stored in another variable. And um, now before I go to the loops, I create um, I calculate my updated uh, oil rate, which is going to be a reduced rate by a factor of 95. And that's going to be applied if any of the water cuts, uh, the, if the maximum water cut in any layers were to be below uh, 50%, uh, about 50%. Uh, in order to update the, um, 
the rate, uh, the production rate of the well uh, in CMG, we use alter and then well name. In, this, in the line after, we have to return a string, a number that uh, represents the new rate. So STO was my variable. STR, STO converts this uh, the number to a string and returned uh, to the simulator. So I have two um, info to seem that goes back to the simulator. And then in the next line, I pass a message to the user saying that uh, we're reducing the oil, uh, production, oil production rate by a factor of 95. And uh, in each coupling, uh, we have two ifs. So the first if we discussed, and the second if condition, we check that we make sure that we are about the 60 um, cubic uh, meter per day. If, if we went below that, uh, the shot-in horizontal well, uh, the shot-in keyword is going to be returned, and the message to the user uh, confirming the this changes so uh, let's press run button and uh, we can set the number of cpus that we need uh, obviously it's going to be imex has to be uh, imex 2022 or later uh, the uh, uh, versions and uh, if needed you can set a different coupling time uh, we start from the day zero uh, from the initial uh, date and um, the coupling by default happens at every date card in my data set. Uh, the, those dates are uh, monthly um, uh, populated. So effectively, we're going to communicate between Pi Control and the simulator every month. Uh, under, under switches, uh, one useful one is uh, uh, record. So uh, record allows, uh, keeps make a file that uh, keeps track of all the uh, exchanges uh, between the simulator and the uh, Python controller. So if you press not run, two window pops up. Uh, on the right-hand side window, this is the usual uh, IMAX time stepping window. So you can see the time steps that we're taking, oil, water rate, uh, material balance, every usual uh, information. And the left-hand side, can see the, the, the information that's coming from the controller. So we're dropping the, uh, the oil rate by a factor of 95. And as you can see, uh, it's being updated. If I go to the um, launcher and remove the filter so we can see all the files, uh, there's a file called um, OBR. Uh, so on the same file, OBREC. So if you open that in the notepad, uh, we can see uh, the information that uh, exchange between two uh, application. So there wasn't any, uh, all the uh, um, responses from the uh, Python were empty until at uh, time step 12, uh, we returned this rate and then we kept um, uh, and returning another alter card, we reduced um, uh, rates and you can see this um, reducing <coughs> alter values continues until uh, eventually we shot in, we return the shot in keywords. So let's have a look at the uh, results. Here I've loaded two data, two SR3 files, the, the base data set that we saw initially in, uh, in the slide, the results and the Pi controller, uh, the one, the run that we just finished, uh, loaded into results and I already plotted the uh, the oil rate from these two runs. So the green run is the base data set, uh, and, and as you can see, the horizontal well was producing all the way to the till the end. In the the other day run, which is controlled by the controller, uh, at some point, at um, after 120 days, uh, we started to reduce the the oil rate, and that uh, continued uh, throughout the run, and eventually, at some point. Uh, this uh, around um, uh, October 9, 1986, we went below uh, 60 and the, the well was immediately shot. Now let's try another uh, uh, run. In this case, we're going to be a bit more aggressive. And instead of reducing the rate by a factor of 95, let's try to uh, do uh, by a factor of 90% uh, reduction. So. All I need to do is to load the other data set. So I'm going to load 
the other data sets, uh, we finish this one, uh, we load the other one, and it's exactly the same data set, so I don't need to uh, redefine my variables. All I'm going to change is to uh, reduce the, uh, the current oil rate by a factor of 90%, but a factor of 0.9, and you might also want to update the, the message to the user. So I'm gonna now run this data set again, and let's see what uh, changes in my output. So I wanna save the new syntax, and let's say run. So again, we established the communication. You can see the messages appears here, and IMEX um, log files um, on this window. So the, the, the first change happened at 120 days, and we can see that we're dropping the, the oil rate a bit faster. So let's wait for this run to finish. Okay, uh, here I've loaded the SRG file from the, the other data set where we were a bit more aggressive in our uh, uh, oil, oil rate control. So I named it with a tag of a pi aggressive. Um, I updated our plots with the new um, control. That's in blue and you can see that the, the oil rate was um, is dropping um, a bit quicker than the, uh, the base the previous Python control run. And in this case, we shot the well uh, almost uh, within the, the first year, and it's uh, closed for the uh, most of the time uh, during the simulation. And that uh, that's uh, the end of the run. It stays um, till the end of the run. Uh, let's have a look at the water cut uh, trends uh, from the, uh, the more aggressive case. You can see that uh, we, uh, uh, these are water cut for individual layers. Despite our best efforts, uh, one of the layers, which is in this case um, uh, highlighted in the, in, the, in the legend, still goes well above the 50%. So we might uh, need to think about other ways of controlling the water cuts and uh, um, other uh, controls if needed. So I hope uh, this is useful. Please consider um, subscribing uh, to our channel and turn on the notifications uh, so you get a, um, a notification when there's a new tech bite or new video from CMG becomes available. Uh, have a great day. Thank you very much.